I, I don't feel a pressure to live up to him. Like I'm incredibly proud of my dad. That's like telling, you know, Jordan's son to go out there and win six championships and <laughs> have the same exact legacy. Like I look at dad's legacy and I don't tell him this enough. I respect his work. I respect um, how much he's put into this, his heart and soul, his entire life, basically. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of you. And I, I don't feel like I have to live up to you. you. You've always taught me that it's about writing my own legacy. So if anything, I just feel the only pressure I feel is making you proud. Oh man, you're gonna make me cry, dude. We should we should do uh we should do more interviews so so you can share your thoughts with your deep thoughts with dad. <laughs> What's doing everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood for what is the five hundredth episode of the podcast. It's so hard to believe. I've got a very special father-son interview to hit you guys with today. Brian and Bailey Literal are joining me for this milestone episode. Brian has had a legendary music career as a member of the Backstreet Boys, which is the largest selling boy band in history. His son Bailey is following in his footsteps. However, he's taken a slightly different path. He is a country music recording artist. I'm so honored to have them here for this very special edition of the podcast. Now, the entire catalog of First Class Fatherhood is not uploaded here on YouTube, so if you'd like to check out all the interviews I've done with dads, such as Tom Brady, Deion Sanders, Dana White, Matthew McConaughey, and hundreds of others, my link tree is in the description down below. Just tap that and you can get access to the entire catalog and the archives of First Class Fatherhood with 500 episodes to date. I can't say thank you enough to all you guys out there for listening. Uh, let's get going with today's episode. Tap the subscribe button, hit the like, and let's jump into it right now with Brian and Bailey Literal on First Class Fatherhood. Uh, joining me now, First Class Father, Brian and his son, Bailey Literal. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. <laughs> What's up, man? Thank you for having us. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Let, let's kick it off right here. Uh, Brian, hit the listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Uh, well, just I'm just going to punch it away, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. I've been a Backstreet Boy for the past 28 years. Uh, I grew up in Lexington, Kentucky. I now live, uh, reside in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my wife and I, Leanne, had a son in 2002. Uh, and you see that? young strapping young man right there. Uh, his name is Bailey Literal, and now he's in the music business uh, doing country music. So that's a little uh, outline of, of my life in a 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Bailey, hit us with a little intro here. Hey, he got half of it. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just the son of a musical prodigy trying to make it myself. Um, like he said, you know, some point in time, you know, Meteor struck Earth, 2002. I was born. <laughs> um, and now, and now I'm trying to make it in the music business myself. So, <laughs> yeah, great stuff. It's an honor to have you guys here. Obviously, Brian, you've had a uh, highly successful career here. You're very well known in the music industry here. But take us back to the beginning here, your fatherhood journey. Then, about how old were you when you became a dad, and how did becoming a father kind of change your perspective on life? Oh, wow. Well, uh, this was 2002. Uh, I had just turned 27 at the time, and uh, Bailey was born later that year in November. Um, this is like, I, I have to say, this is something that I've always wanted growing up. Um, I've always wanted to be a dad. I've always wanted to be a husband. I've always wanted to be a, a father and have a family. Um, that was always my inspiration growing up, um, growing up in the Bible Belt in Lexington, Kentucky, going to church all the time on Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, you know, my, my parents are still together after 50 years, uh, which is kind of amazing. Uh, it's just, un, you know, those those things are un, they're like unheard of, basically. But um, these are just traditions in my family. Um I grew up in a, you know, in a small town singing in church and uh, had aspirations to, to do other things with my life. Uh, being a Backstreet Boy kind of fell in, in my lap in early 1993. Uh, my cousin Kevin called me from Orlando and was like, hey, I want you to join this band. And I was like, oh, my God. OK, so I left home and uh, and here we are. But um, just I mean, fatherhood has changed me. I think it's changed me a lot. It, it's um, it's given me additional inspiration. You know, music is, is part of our life. We've grown up with music. Bailey's grown up in the music business his whole life and seen, you know, the rise and the fall and the ups and the downs and, you know, the tribulations and the high times. But at the same time, it's like, 
he's he's become an inspiration to me now with with his journey. So uh, he's doing nothing but pushing me and continuing to, uh, you know, get the best out of his dad. <laughs> Yeah, very well said, Brian. And one thing you mentioned there, too, about your parents being together and being a rare thing, unfortunately. I, I speak all the time on this show about the fatherless crisis we have going on out there. So many kids are growing up without a father or a father figure in their life, and it's really yeah. having a devastating result on our society. So I love the relationship you have here with Bailey, your son. It's inspiring to see. Uh, so, so, Bailey, what would you consider to be the top values that your dad uh, tried to instill in you growing up? Always faith first. Um, just staying level-headed you know I, I have to say if it wasn't for my mom and my dad i wouldn't be grounded obviously and sometimes people don't have uh their parents to even keep them grounded or have that relationship with their parents my parents are my best friends and um my whole life they've always been involved they haven't been helicopter parents but they've always been involved <laughs> to the point where i always felt loved um i always felt full of my heart and you know, it's it's upsetting to disappoint your parents or to let them down when you have that support system um, around you. So I think, uh, you know, my dad and my mom have always just helped me strive to be the best I can be. And uh, one of the you know best things I've ever heard from my dad is, you know, he just told me, no matter what you do, I will support you. And I I don't take that for granted today because a lot of people don't have that support. Yeah, re really great stuff, Bailey. And one thing you mentioned there, too, about letting your parents down. Uh, it, one thing I, I ask a lot, Brian, uh, the, the high, like, elite athletes and Navy SEALs and these guys that are just high performers, high achievers like yourself there. I ask them, because, listen, being a son myself, I know what it's like to want to get that approval from your father. We look up to our dads. We want them to, we want them to be proud of us. Having a dad uh, that's selling multi-million records and he's a big superstar, that could be a lot to live up to for a, a young man. So how did you kind of navigate this relationship with your son to make sure he didn't feel that pressure growing up that he had to live up to your expectations um i don't i don't really think there's any expectations to be honest with you um i mean his his life is is different than mine was um his situation is different uh his uh the education about the business is different um he is you know he's he's just a well-rounded good dude you know he's a really really good kid uh i can't say kid anymore he's a grown man uh, at 18 but um and he just he makes his mom and I proud every day. Um, it's it's tough in this world that we live in today, you know, with social media and everybody has a platform. Everybody has something to say about something. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody wants to, uh, you know, to come at you or support you. There's nothing really in between. Uh, and for me with Bailey, it's just like, dude, just follow your heart, man. Be be the true you of who you are. And um, I'll never forget. It was probably. It was like four years ago, wasn't it, Bubba? You came to me in Las Vegas. We were doing our Las Vegas residency out there with the Backstreet Boys. And uh, I was having dinner with Bailey and Leanne, my wife. And he comes to me and he's like, Dad, I've, you know, I got something to tell you. And I was like, what, what's that? And he was like, I want to do country music. And I was like, you know, I looked at him and my first, my first comment right off the bat was, why not? You know, why not? I mean, we, we shouldn't put limits on our kids on anything that they want to do. Um, you know, you can't run around with a with a book on your head like, no, 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 you can't do that or you're not talented enough or you're not going to work that hard to, to be that successful. Uh, and I think if anything, he he knows the work ethic that goes into being successful in the music business. And um, and he's doing a, he's doing a fine job at that. So we're just like he said, we're we're his support system. We want to navigate the system well, think ahead make those 100 right decisions. Uh, I had a manager many years ago say, you have to make 100 right decisions in order to kind of catapult yourself forward. And, um, and that's an important, important aspect when we look at our, our life every day and how you navigate the system and being the best that you can be. Yeah, well said. And then Bailey, how about for you? Did, did you feel any of that pressure growing up to, to, to get into the music industry? And walk, walk me through that decision of when you decided to make uh, country music your thing. And, and, and what was it like to bring that to your dad and tell him? That was that was honestly nerve wracking because everyone had expected me to say like, hey, you know, look, I want to do music. And so when we were in Vegas, when he was doing his residency and I approached him and my mom at dinner, I just I. I, I told him, I, was, I said, you know, I want to do country music, but I just don't think it's going to work. It doesn't seem practical. And people my whole life have told me, um, 
you know, you come from like pop royalty. Why don't you try and do that? And why don't you do this? And I just, I mean, my upbringing, everyone thinks that we live a certain way when we don't. I mean, I've, I've grown up in Georgia, born and raised my whole life, you know, back and forth with, you know, to California to see dad record and things like that and had a place out there, but it was, uh, it was mostly here. And so I, I grew up listening to country music and I grew up, uh, just wanting to, to honestly represent myself well and be real. And so I felt like that was the best way to do it. And, you know, picking a guitar and singing just raw is like probably my absolute favorite thing to do. I knew this was the genre I could definitely do that in. Um, expectation wise, you know, I've never felt a pressure to, to live up to my dad's legacy or anything like that, because like my dad said, you know, it's different. Um, but it's also the way that, that, um, you know, he's put it and the leadership he's brought in my life is he's never made me feel that pressure. He's never put that on me, um, nor has anyone in my family, nor has my mom. So I, I don't feel a pressure to live up to him. Like I'm incredibly proud of my dad. That's like telling, you know, Jordan's son to go out there and win six championships and, <laughs> and have the same exact legacy. Like I look at dad's legacy and I don't tell him this enough. I respect his work. I respect um, how much he's put into this, his heart and soul, his entire life, basically. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of you. And I, I don't feel like I have to live up to you. you. You've always taught me that it's about writing my own legacy. So if anything, I just feel the only pressure I feel is making you proud. Oh man, you're gonna make me cry, dude. We should we should do uh we should do more interviews so, so you can share your thoughts with your deep thoughts with dad. <laughs> hey baby, that was that was beautifully said. And just to tap real quick onto one thing your dad mentioned there, he didn't have to grow up with this in his career was the social media that we got today, man. It's it, it can be brutal on there. I know uh, you know, family and friends will tell you, hey, you're doing a great job, but sometimes social media is going to be brutally honest here. What has been the feedback for you, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? What has been the feedback from you early on here in your music career? You know, it's it's been pretty great. It's it's built up the last like three years more than it ever has. You know, my social media numbers like tripled um, like at the start of 2018. So then ever since then, I've just been really trying to build up a good following on Instagram. And that's my stronghold right now. I think the most impossible thing so far is trying to wrap my head around like when TikTok came into the picture, <laughs> instead of me being like, oh yeah, this is so great. I was like, oh my Lord, what is this? Like, so when TikTok came into the picture, it was this whole other realm. So that I can tell you firsthand last year, like we were meeting with labels uh, for myself and we were meeting with all these people and we were getting excited thinking, okay, you know, we've got the, we've built up the credibility that all these labels wanted, you know, I've put in the time and he's paid the dues and he's played the bars and he's, you know, he's, he's done everything. He's qualified. He's got music. He's a writer. And then now you sit down in a label meeting. They're like, you, do you have a TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, not yet. And they're like, okay, <laughs> then, you know, we'll see you. We'll, we'll touch base with you. And you're like, just because of like TikTok. So I, I think that social media struggle for me is is hard, so I'm gonna have to start a TikTok. It sounds like um, <laughs> I just haven't wanted to yet. Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, social media numbers have been great, and I've been comfortable. But as soon as I get used to Instagram, there's something else taking for the world. So I'm gonna <laughs> have to jump into that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Bailey, just like you say there, it, it's sometimes it's still not normal for me to hear a grown man saying, hey, did you see my tweet? Did you, did you see what I tweeted <laughs> out? Like, it's still very strange to see professional people talking about this. Uh, yeah. and, and Brian, let me bring this back into you as a dad here. Uh, what type of disciplinarian are you as a dad? Now, he's right here. So you got, we got to be honest here. What, what type of disciplinarian are you as a dad? And is that different than the discipline style that you grew up with? Um, I don't I don't think it's any uh, I don't think it's a whole lot different. Than what I grew up with. Um, my mom and dad were, were pretty strict. Um, you know, my dad was working all the time. He worked at IBM, uh, retired after like 33 years at IBM. Um, so it was all about stability with me. You know, mom was mom was home. She was nurturing the kids. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget. She started working uh, when I was in high school because you know, life changed. Life got a little faster. My older brother had graduated. I was in high school. There were more expenses. I was eating them out of house and home. And, uh, 
And so my mom, you know, got a receptionist job, but um, just kind of growing up like we did. I mean, you respect your parents. I'm about principles. I've always been about principles. My parents taught me that uh, everything starts with principles. I share that even with my Backstreet Boys members. You know, when we make decisions and do business, uh, even the common respect that we have for one another, it's about principles. Uh, and I always talk about that. So with Bailey, it's it's the same thing. You know, you say you're going to do something, you do it. Um, you, you stand behind uh, what you believe. Uh, you stick your neck out when you have to. You don't always have to do that. Be smart about it. But um, but don't let anybody push you around. You know, be who you are and not dictated by someone else. So uh, those are just our parenting skills, I think, you know. And like you said, social media, man, has changed the game because uh, people are so influenced by outer sources now. And um, you kind of got to put those blinders on like a racehorse. You know, you got to focus on what you want to do and uh, and be the best at what you can do about yourself. And so that's what we teach Bailey. You know, have morals, have principles, stay true to yourself and, and just be strong in, in your own heart. Yeah, listen, I, I got four kids myself. I, I'm in the thick of it right now. Uh, and and the, the social media, especially with the pandemic, I thought I had a handle on this technology, but the pandemic just kind of knocked that right out of the box. And it's just still <laughs> trying to still trying to reel it back in. Uh, uh, Bailey, how, how much of that uh, holds water here? Uh, what was your dad like as a disciplinarian? Was he very strict on you? Did you try to get away with a lot of stuff? What was it like growing up with your dad as a disciplinarian? I'm going to have to disappoint and make this pretty easy. I, uh, <laughs> I... I always was like, honestly, like the goody two shoes kid up until about high school. That's when I finally started to like get in trouble more often. But it was it was always like, you know, I hope what I just said didn't make anyone offended. Like, you know, I was always <laughs> just like very I was super like um, I was just respectful. Like, I mean, I would like knock something over in the house if I broke something. It would take me like five seconds to tell on myself, but the guilt and build up from it was so powerful. So I, I, I was known for never being able to, to keep a secret, even if it was my <laughs> friend's little dirty secret, like I would just tell it. And then I would tell their parents and be like, guys, I'm so sorry, but I don't want you to do that. Like I just always, I told on myself, I was known for telling on myself. I still am um, pretty much 90% of the time. There's another 10% we don't have to talk about, but um <laughs> Also, I, I would say like what as to add to what dad was saying earlier, um, he's he's always taught me respect, but he's always taught me to, uh, to stand up for myself, but be a, a good hearted Christian. So I was never that kid in fifth grade to get pushed around on the playground and go, you know, you shouldn't push me like I was always I was going to push back, but I was going to fight back and stand my ground. But um I was always decent and respectful to everyone. And that's just a, a common rule in my house is, is whoever you meet, you look them in the eye, you show them respect, um, no matter who it is in your life. And uh, every walk of life, every religion, every color, every creed. So it's it's just that's how it's been. It's just the common like, the common word I can use is respect. Yeah, really well said, Bailey. And, and listen, you mentioned Christian there. Uh, I know, Brian, faith is something that's very big and important to you. I'm a faith-based person myself. It's an important part of our day. Every night we sit together, the six of us as a family, we pray together before dinner. Uh, I think it's important in, in, in every family. Oh, speak just for a second on your faith, Brian. How, how important was your faith in bringing Bailey up? And, and when did that become um, the focal point of your life? Was it always there from the beginning or there's something that, that came upon in your growing up? Uh, just speak a bit on your faith. Well, um, it's actually a long, it's a long story, but I'll keep it short. Um, I was a born again believer ever since I was eight years old. Uh, I'll never forget sitting in church and I was in the balcony. Uh, the pastor was preaching and it just, it sounded like God was talking directly to me about everything I needed to know. And, um, I'll never forget as a young boy getting up out of the balcony and walking all the way down front. I was baptized later that week, that Wednesday service, um, you know, my my faith is my compass. It gives you um, it gives you morals. It gives you strength. It gives you stability. It gives you all of those things that we're talking about that make that make us who we are. And, um, you know, growing up in church, it was like my my thing was uh, I always thought about somebody's watching. Right. Even in the generation that we grew up in the in the late 70s, 80s, 90s, somebody's always watching. And, you know, it's so evident today that 
you know, everybody's watching all the time now uh, in, in the world that we live in today with camera phones and everything. So it's just that it's just that compass. My faith was always my compass. It helped me make decisions. It helped me navigate the bad decisions that I made. It helped me say no to a lot of things that could have derailed our career, uh, derailed my life in general. And um, it's just that that inner voice, man. If you're close to yourself and you understand what's going on around you and you're connected with things closely like that, being my faith, it's it's always helped me uh, guide, you know, guide that straight and narrow. Yeah, well stated. And as I mentioned earlier about the fatherless crisis, also God's been removed from so much of our society. And those two things uh, parlayed are really, you know, having a devastating result. Uh, and, and, and Bailey, I wanted to, I, w- I wanted to ask you because I, I've had uh, uh, AJ McLean and Nick Carter on the podcast here. AJ talked highly of you. Uh, what, what is it like for you? Uh, he called you like a, almost like a big brother or like a protector when the kids all get together from the band, all the band's kids. <laughs> uh, what is your relationship like with the other members uh, of the band and their kids? I would say my relationship with the guys is is pretty close uh, for the most part. Definitely AJ and Kevin have been a a huge role in my life. Um, AJ always was one of my biggest supporters. uh, And, you know, when I went on tour with the boys two years ago, um, you know, AJ and Kevin were definitely first to just say, hey, yes, let's do this. Like, let's give them a shot. My whole life, AJ's been, um, he's been a part. He's been Uncle AJ. So <laughs> I thank him so much for that. And and Kevin, you know, being my cousin, which is great to have family. And um, on the road with you, like during those times is amazing. And I would have to say I'm I'm obviously close closest to uh, Mason, uh, which is the second oldest out of all the kids. Yeah, that's um, Kevin. So it, is, it is insane to see the second oldest be as old as he is now and growing up i just saw a video of him playing soccer a couple weeks ago and i was just i was blown away um and aj's kids uh ava and lyric i uh, i mean this is like quick story i saw them about two years ago at staples center uh and it was the first time i'd seen them in a hot minute so they had grown so much since i'd seen them both so i saw (laughs) i saw ava and I, i was like hey Ava, how are you doing she's like hey i'm good how are you and and lyric she was, I mean, Lyric was teensy. Yeah, when she was I, teensy. Our last time. <laughs> and uh, I'm sitting there and I, I go, oh, uh, hey, Lyric, what's up? She goes, hi. And I was like, holy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she, was, she was talking full sentences. And I was like, man, like how much have I missed already? Like, I mean, she's got this, she's got this like commentator voice too. I can see her one being like, and the Jets are on the 35 yard line. <laughs> 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 but I, uh, you know, they've, they've been a big part of my life. And uh, and yes, I do feel uh, kind of like the big brother. And on tour, you know, even now, I'll still have to round up the cattle, make sure they're all doing all right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I just uh, I love them all and, and they are family. So I have to say that. Yeah, very cool. And, and Brian, as I mentioned, I, I have four kids. My oldest is 15. My youngest is my only girl. She's six. So she's got a while to go yet for this. But my older guys are just about to get just about to get into this. Now, one of the things I, as a dad, I, I want when my kids hit this dating scene, I want the, the, whoever they're going to date their family to feel comfortable knowing that they have a good man, a good young man coming to date their daughter. That's important to me. What well, you're right here with Bailey, 18. He's uh, he's a grown up now. What kind of advice did you give him when he became old enough to start hitting that dating scene? Uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to use his own words that he used just a few minutes ago. You know, it's, it's about respect. Uh, it's about, you know, honoring, you know, honoring your partner in every way. Um, uh, being a gentleman, um, being respectful, um, just, just helping in any, any way you can. Uh, I think that's important, uh, as, as a father, as we grow and, and we have our family and we get to share these things with our kids, that's, you know, it's like, what, wouldn't you want to pass down other than that? You know, um, I tell Bailey all the time, like uh, Bailey and I have like this running joke about every time we go out to eat, um, he'll like him and I, we will race to the car to open mom's door. So it's like, he always like tries to push me out of the way or I'm like, I'm like, Hey son, look over there. It's a, it's magic Johnson. (laughs) And he's like, what? (laughs) I'll take off running to open mom's door. So it's, these are just these things that we've instilled in him, you know, and I'm sure you've done that in your boys because, you know, you've got to, you've got to send them out to the wolves sooner or later. And, um, they've got to, they've got to want to come back home. And I think 
just like you said, this this fatherless society that we've grown up in. I mean, everything starts at home, and those values are so important uh, to be passed down. And I think not a lot of kids get that opportunity. Not a lot of young men today get that. And um, I mean, maybe we should maybe we should start a site or a company or a foundation or something that you know us as grown men as fathers can can be mentors to those young kids and just get personal advice. Maybe we do something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's definitely needed. That, that's why I'm here doing this. I bring on a lot of highly successful people like yourself, and they all testify that despite all these amazing accomplishments they've had, it's really through the experience of becoming a father that's given them a sense of fulfillment in life. So those are the messages oh. I'm, tr- I'm trying to put out there. I love what you say there about uh, your wife, you know, opening the door for her, because I do that with my kids. And sometimes if my wife's about to open, I have to use the, the key fob and I'll lock the door so she can't <laughs> open it. And one of us can get over there to get it, you know? That's um, what we do. That's what we do. Because they little, they little beat me and I'm like, I'm like, man, you're silly because I got the key. So it's like, doot, doot, you know, so I keep it locked. <laughs> well, listen, I, I know I'm running up against it here, so I want to start closing this out. Uh, Bailey, I, I want to ask you, you obviously got your music career started here. This game, as we mentioned, has changed for the way that we can enter this music industry. It's changed since your dad's been coming up in it. What kind of advice do you have out there um, for, for the young kid or the parents of young kids that want to get involved in the music industry and start a music career? Okay. I would... I would honestly say to everybody that um, keep faith in your heart. Um, Honestly, be relentless in the best way possible because there's always going to be somebody out there that's working extra harder than you are. Um, The music business is a competition. It doesn't matter the genre. It doesn't matter uh, if you're playing guitar or you're a singer. It's, I mean, it goes for anything. It is a competition and it's a race to the top. Um, you've got to be, you've got to be completely a thousand percent in it, um, to win it. And so I feel like that's something I've struggled with. Um, and there's been times where I've been completely discouraged and thought I'm not cut out for this. And even now there's still times like that. Um, but insecurity is the number one thing that will get in your way. And most musicians are honestly the most insecure people in the world. And you would never know, um, because as much courage as it takes to get up there, uh, everyone has their own demons. So I have to say, if, if you're insecure, uh, keep trying to find yourself because it's going to be an everlasting battle if you don't stay true to who you are and, and find out who you are as a person. Um, so being relentless, definitely, like I said, is is the number one thing. You, you got to be able to take criticism. Uh, you got to be able to accept it. You got to ask people how you can be better. You You have to be okay with being turned down because once you get there and once you make it, uh, it's going to be so much sweeter than holding it against everyone that's ever turned you down. You got to thank those people for, for passing up on you or saying you're not good enough or you can't write or you're not talented enough for a record deal. You got to get past all of that and use those people as fuel. And I feel like the, this past year, that's definitely what I've done um, because I've had a lot of rejection. I've also had a lot of praise. Um, and so I think there's just a, a healthy balance between the two that you have to find. So it's, it's about positivity, being relentless, uh, giving it your best effort. And that's something I fall short of quite a lot that I'm trying to, to work on. So nobody's perfect. Um, but those are just some of the things I think that, that you have to, you have to do to, to make it honestly. Yeah. Just try, you know, it's, it's yeah. that, it's that simple. Just try. Cause if you don't try, you don't know, you know, and if you don't ask questions, if you don't educate yourself along the way, then then what what are you? What are you what are you doing? Are you really growing? Are you maturing? Are you being better? Um, and that's the thing we talk about it all the time when Bailey talks about that that race to the top. It's yes, it's a race, but we also say it's a marathon. This isn't a sprint. You know, the record business is not a sprint. It's not a hundred. You know, it's not a hundred meter Olympic dash. It's not that. Uh, it's a marathon. You gotta you gotta have faith like the turtle. But you got to be able to react like the like the rabbit, <laughs> you know, at the, at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a TikTok, I guess, huh? Nah, it's not, yeah. there. <laughs> not there. Well, listen, la- last thing I want to hit you with here, Brian, I'd love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? Wow. Uh, I'm going to say one minute you're like the person that you think you are. And the next minute you're a different person. Um, right at, right at birth. I mean, I remember, you know, holding Bailey for the first time, uh, it, 
it changes you. It changes everything about you. Uh, it gives you drive. It gives you ambition. It gives you strength. It gives you protection. It gives you all of these things that you take on as a dad. And if you haven't been through that experience, you don't know until you join the club. I call it joining the club of uh, being a dad. But um, it's just one of the most rewarding things, if not the most rewarding thing in life, is uh, is to watch your kids grow and, and to help them in any way possible, nurture them and uh, and just be their support system, uh, be there to pick them up. They're going to fall. Sometimes they've got to push themselves up. But uh, as long as you're close enough to grab, if you could uh, be in there, uh, it teaches them a lot about life. And, and that learning process that you're you're going through with your child, it will be nothing but better. Uh, for you as a person. So, yeah, very well said. I love the message. This has been an honor for me. I got to say, Brian and Bailey, you guys are first class all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. Thanks, Alec. Appreciate yeah. it, man.